A novice nun is hired at an orphanage in Rome and meets a peculiar child whom the rest seem afraid of. As she bonds with her, she eventually uncovers a conspiracy that could end humanity, and the child she cares for is a part of it. Father Brennan heads into an under-construction church to meet Father Harris. While in a confession booth, Harris hands the other priest an old photo of a baby with two nuns and another priest. Brennan comments that the child looks human, turning over the photo to see the word Skiana written on the back. However, Harris asserts that the child wasn't conceived naturally. The church found a devout woman who volunteered to carry the child. The birth happened early, and they bound the mother to the bed with black fabric covering her face. Harris adds that the child would be in her teens by now, and they are just waiting until she is old enough. He then quiets down, so Brennan checks the other side of the booth and finds it empty. He goes outside and sees Harris walking out of the church. He urges the older priest to confess his sins. But Harris claims that he doesn't intend to be forgiven, he only wants it to be over. At that moment, the stained glass window being installed in the church accidentally falls. The shards rain down on them, causing a large gash at the back of Harris' head. Despite this, he smiles, seemingly happy that his ordeal is coming to an end. Not long after, a novice American nun named Margaret arrives in Rome and is greeted by Father Gabriel and Cardinal Lawrence. During their drive, Margaret admires the city since it's her first time being there, Lawrence compliments her hopeful demeanor, noting that since he met her when she was a child, he knew she was destined for great things. Someone suddenly pounds against the car window as they pass by protesters. Lawrence laments how the protest is supposed to be about fair wages, though the youth joined in just to challenge authority including the church. Soon, they arrive at the orphanage led by the abbess, Sister Silva. The abbess gives the new nun a tour of their establishment, noting how they only take in girls. They also watch over un married women to give birth safely. While Silva talks to an expectant mother, the novice nun notices Father Spiletto in his office. During the tour, they encounter Sister Angelica, who only stares at Margaret. Silva explains that Angelica grew up in the orphanage but isn't well. Just then, a child's scream catches the abbess attention, so she leaves the novice. While waiting, Margaret admires the drawings displayed on a board, though she becomes curious about the one drawing where a girl floats above the others. The drawing is signed by Carlita Schiana. She then checks on the nearest room where she hears a girl humming. There, she meets the artist behind the drawing, Carlita. To her surprise, Carlita slowly approaches the woman before grabbing her face and tasting her cheek. Hearing the commotion, Silva arrives and scolds the orphan. Hoping to mitigate the situation, Margaret shakes off her shock and compliments Carlita's drawing. This prompts her to give the new nun another drawing before the abbess ushers her out of the room. Silva shares with Margaret how Carlita hurt someone yesterday so she's being kept away. She then points to the orphanage's driver, Luca, noting that they need him whenever they leave given the protests. That evening, Luca drops off Margaret at her apartment building. Only then does she check Carlita's drawing, which appears apparently shows nuns apprehending the girl. As she prepares for bed, Margaret prays but stops when she hears someone at the door. From it, she hears the voices of two nuns who cared for her as a child. The voices call Margaret as one of the worst behaved children, so if she causes trouble again, they'll tie her to the bed. The voices then move across her room, and to her horror, her habit moves, revealing an old nun approaching her. Margaret snaps back to reality when her roommate, Luz, arrives home. Luz welcomes her, though Margaret gets curious to see the woman, who's also a novice nun, wearing revealing clothing. Luz defends that she wants to explore her freedom before taking the veil. The two get to know each other, with Margaret explaining that Cardinal Lawrence was a priest at the orphanage she grew up in and was a father figure to her, mostly since she was a problematic child. When asked how problematic she was, Margaret admits that she used to imagine things that could scare her enough for the nuns to subdue her. Lawrence helped her get over this. Hearing this, Luz shares that when she was kicked out of her house, she started hearing a voice. He promised her that even if she didn't have a home, he was still there for her. This was why Luz chose to become a nun. The next day, Margaret and Luz spend a normal day in the orphanage. At night, however, Margaret overhears nuns praying in a separate room. When she peeks inside, she finds Carlita bound to the bed before Silva shuts the door. Angelica's laughs divert Margaret's attention, but when the novice nun looks at her, she finds the strange woman in tears. Before she can approach, Luz takes her roommate away, promising her a fun night. When they get to their apartment, Luz lets Margaret borrow some of her clothes to take her to a bar.
bar. The woman hesitates about this, so her roommate encourages her to at least understand what she is giving up before taking her vows. With this, Luz brings her to a bar where they attract the attention of Alfonso and Paolo. While her roommate dances with Alfonso, Margaret gets to know Paolo and eventually dances with him as well. The night progresses with Margaret losing herself and making out with Paolo. The woman wakes up back in her bed the next morning with no recollection of what happened. Luz assures her that she took Margaret home before anything happened, promising that she won't tell the church about it. Despite this, Margaret feels guilt over losing herself and prays for forgiveness at the church, unaware of Brennan watching her. He later approaches the nun and warns her not to get close to Carlita, sharing that evil things happen around her. When Margaret hesitates, Brennan asks her to meet with him tonight so he can tell her everything. The nun proceeds to the orphanage only to learn that Carlita has been sent to the bad room. Margaret confronts Silva about this, but the abbess defends that the child bit a nun earlier. She takes her to see Carlita, unaware that the girl has been drawing something under the carpet. Margaret is horrified at how the room is suffocating, though the abbess excuses that punishments aren't meant to be comfortable. Margaret later comforts Carlita, sympathizing with her since she was also a troublesome kid. Their conversations interrupted when they hear someone scream. The nun rushes to check and finds that one of the women is giving birth. The woman, however, is strapped down, screaming until she is given nitrous oxide. This has her laughing maniacally before thrashing around again as her child is born. A clawed hand suddenly reaches out from the mother, and Margaret faints at the sight. After being checked by the nurse, Lawrence assures Margaret that she's not the first woman to faint upon witnessing childbirth for the first time. That afternoon, the orphanage becomes festive. Margaret notices Carlita at one of the tables, though she gets concerned upon noticing that Angelica is with her. When Margaret approaches them, Angelica hands her Carlita's drawing of the mother bound on the bed, though the nun clarifies that she drew the baby, which is a boy. The novice comments that the drawing is improper, and this angers Angelica. To her surprise, Angelica kisses her before leaving. Concerned, Margaret takes Carlita for a walk, only for the orphans to invite the nun to play. Seeing an opportunity, Margaret encourages Carlita to join, though the outcast orphan looks uncomfortable. The festivities stop when they notice Angelica on the balcony, laughing. She whispers, it's all for you, before lighting lighting herself on fire and jumping off with a rope causing her to dangle to her death. Quickly, the orphans are taken away as the panicked nuns save them from the sight. That evening, a worried Margaret meets with Brennan in his apartment. He gives her the photo Harris gave him, noting that the priest there is Spiletto. Upon seeing the name Skiana on the back, Margaret realizes that the baby is Carlita. Brennan explains that there are two churches, the one who follows Christ's teachings like them, and the church who commits crime in the name of God and the supreme power. With the youth turning away from religion, the latter side needs something to scare people into believing in religion again so they can regain control. With this, a small powerful group of priests and bishops plan to bring forth the Antichrist and control him into causing enough suffering to force people back to church. To do this, they've been raising Carlita to be the mother of the Antichrist. Carlita would have been born on the sixth day of the sixth month at the sixth hour, and she would bear the numbers on her body symbolizing the mark of the devil. Since Brennan had been excommunicated, his contacts are limited, so he asks Margaret to retrieve Carlita's father files from the orphanage so they can confirm if she's the one. He also mentions that the church keeps a beast who would be Carlita's father. Horrified, Margaret stands to leave, but Brennan asserts that if he's right, then they must stop the church's plan at all costs, otherwise humanity will be destroyed. He also warns that June 6 is approaching, and so the Antichrist might be born soon. Convinced that he's mad, Margaret storms off. The ideas, however, plague her the next day while she joins the orphans and staff on a field trip. While on the bus, she asks Gabriel about Carlita, though he claims that he doesn't know much about her. He then warns her against her questions, pointing out that Silva's keeping an eye on them. The group arrives at a museum with Margaret watching over Carlita, studying her to find the mark. She also asks her if someone's ever done something to her, and the orphan admits that she tends to see things that she isn't sure if they're real. Margaret admits that she had the same hallucinations, but she eventually learned that her mind was only playing on her. Carlita, however, argues that hers are different. When asked, 
how she's sure Carlita runs off. The woman chases after her and finds her sitting with another nun. To her horror, it's a burned Angelica. Silva suddenly grabs her, snapping her back to reality. The museum's being cleared as a riot has broken out, so the nuns usher the orphans back to the bus. During the chaos, Margaret gets separated and an explosion causes people to panic. The nun gets caught in the confusion, and in her panic, she sees a demonic claw grabbing her. To Silva, however, Margaret's merely screaming by herself with no one around her. Because of this, Silva later tells Margaret that they'll postpone her vow since her bond with Carlita might have reignited her hallucinations. Margaret argues that she's the only one who cares about Carlita while they only punish her. She even blames the orphan's strange behavior on how the abbess treats her. This only gives Silva more reason to accuse her of being unwell, so she threatens Margaret against seeing Carlita again. That evening, as she's being driven back to her apartment, Margaret notices Paolo in the streets. Because of this, she asks Luca to let her walk home. The woman then catches up to Paolo, but upon recognizing her, he gets scared. He apologizes, insisting that he didn't know. Confused, Margaret asks what he means, so he taps his head and mournfully tells her to look for the mark just before he gets hit by a car. The nun rushes to his aid as he begs for help, so Margaret embraces him. When she pulls him up, however, the bystanders scream as she'd only taken his upper body, leaving his lower half behind. This has the traumatized nun rushing back to the church to pray. Despite her prayers, Margaret spends the night awake. The next day, Luz takes her vows with Cardinal Lawrence presiding over the ceremony. Instead of being happy for her friend, Margaret fears that the events that have happened might mean that Brennan was right. Because of this, she sneaks into Silva's office while everyone's at the ceremony. After searching the abbess's desk, she discovers a hidden key and a secret door on the wall. This opens to a hidden cellar full of old cabinets. Among them, she discovers Carlita's file, confirming that she was born on June 6 at 6 a.m. However, there are several other children born at the same time but in different years. Except for Carlita, the rest were born deformed and died shortly after. Horrified by the revelations, Margaret takes the files and rushes out, only to see that the ceremony is over. Still, she collects Carlita, but the nuns block them from leaving. With no choice, Margaret takes Carlita into a room and locks themselves in. She apologizes to the orphan and promises to protect her as the nuns attempt to break down the door. She then grabs a wooden plank from the bed to keep the others away as they break in. Despite this, she gets outnumbered and pinned to the floor. Carlita tries to save her, but as she's pulled away, she screams, allowing Margaret to see the mark on the roof of her mouth. The nuns then drag a screaming Margaret into the bedroom where she spends the night. As night falls, Margaret wakes up to whispers. This leads her to find the drawings Carlita made under the carpet, which depict the church's attempts to conceive the mother of the Antichrist. Seeing visions of these events, the woman tries to convince herself that it's not real. However, someone responds to her. Margaret looks around and sees a figure emerging from the corner of her room. The figure laughs, revealing that she is the burnt Angelica. The apparition screams at her, making Margaret cry out. Suddenly, Gabrielle arrives to free her. With Luca's help, the two head to Brennan's apartment and give him the children's files. Gabrielle reveals that Brennan first approached him, though at the time, he thought he was crazy. Margaret insists on retrieving Carlita, but Gabrielle points out that they can't return to the orphanage. Instead, Brennan urges them to investigate the documents to prove to the world what the church did. With this, the trio read through the files, with Margaret horrified at how many children were born in the experiment. Brennan also notices how all the children were female. However, they need the Antichrist to be male, leading him to consider if they need the beast to produce the Antichrist with its daughter. This worries Margaret. She then sees the photo from Harris, though she points out that the child there has the mark on her head. Carlita's is on the roof of her mouth, so the baby isn't her. This means there's another surviving child of the beast. The group then searches through the older files until Margaret finds one that doesn't have a photo. She compares the area where the photo should be to the image of the baby, confirming that this is the file of the other surviving child. As Margaret stares at the baby's photo, she recalls how Paolo tapped his head before telling her to look for the mark. The area he tapped is the same place where the baby has the mark so she runs her fingers on that part of her scalp. And this finally reminds
reminds her of what happened on the night at the bar. With the liquor messing with her mind, Margaret was taken into the orphanage's chambers where the nuns and priests, including Paolo and Alfonso, gathered. They placed a bag over her head before waking the bees to use her. This memory has the woman panicking. When she calms down, Brennan confirms the mark on her scalp. He figures out that Margaret has lived her whole life under the church's guidance, allowing them to hide her. They must have brought her to Rome since Carlita wasn't ready. Panicked, Margaret tries to leave, but Brennan points out that it's already June 6th, so the church will come for her. Realizing that she could be carrying the child already, the woman decides to remove it. The men proceed to drive her to a doctor to do this. However, Margaret starts feeling pain just as Luca realizes that they're being followed. The men relax as they eventually lose the other car, but the nun starts feeling sick. Before Brennan can check on her, the car from before crashes into theirs. Margaret steps out of the wreck, but she convulses as something transforms inside her. Alfonso and Spilletto soon arrive just before the woman's belly grows. When Margaret wakes up, she finds herself strapped to a bed. Lawrence greets her, revealing that he is part of the operation. He encourages her that her child will redeem the church, insisting that she is chosen for this. Margaret is then wheeled into the chamber where she can only cry and beg as they prepare her for labor. During this, the rest of the group, which now includes Luz, calmly watches. Finally, the doctor removes the child, only to find that Margaret has twins, a boy and a girl. Everyone celebrates that the Antichrist has been born, so Silva takes the boy into her arms while Margaret's daughter is ignored. Seeing this, the exhausted mother glances at the tools next to her before begging Lawrence to let her hold her son. Silva agrees that the child needs to bond with his mother, so she gives Margaret her son. With this, Margaret stabs Lawrence, and while everyone's distracted, she holds her own child hostage. However, she can't bring herself to harm her son, allowing Silva to take him back while Luz stabs her former roommate. With the Antichrist in her arms, Silva leaves with the rest and orders Alfonso to burn the mother and daughter, unaware that Carlita has found them. Alfonso then sets the chamber on fire to destroy the evidence. As the fire starts, the wounded Margaret grabs her daughter. She then hears the groans of the beast behind the curtain, and she screams upon seeing it engulfed in flames. Fortunately, Carlita finds Margaret, so he pulls her and the child to safety while their father is consumed in the fire. Later that evening, Spiletto hands Luz the file of the US ambassador, Robert Thorne, whom they intend to be the new father of the Antichrist. With that, they switch Margaret's son with Robert's, allowing the child to live in privilege and power. Years later, Carlita and Margaret have found a cabin in the mountains where they raise the latter's daughter together. Their quiet evening is interrupted when someone arrives, so Margaret holds the man at gunpoint, only to find that it's Brennan who survived the crash. He warns her that the church knows they're alive, and they're hunting down her daughter. Despite his concern, Margaret threatens Brennan to leave, insisting that she and her family only want to be left alone. With that, Brennan turns to leave, but not before telling the mother that her son has been named Damien. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.